Howdy, been a minute. As I always say every time it's been a minute. <sighs> Teaching's been interesting. Kids are mean, kids are funny. For example, I teach a Kinder Boost program. It's like kindergarten, but it's more for b building social skills. And the more I work with it, it's like, man, they're here. These, some of these kids are ready for kindergarten. Some of those kindergartners need to go to Kinder Boost. But. <laughs> Just doing head shoulders, you know, head shoulders. You know, you know. Yeah. Doing that with Kinder Boost. And I was like, what, what other body part can we think about? Like thinking elbows, cheeks, teeth, tummy. Child looks straight at me. I don't know how I didn't pick up on this sooner and didn't think, oh. This girl looks straight at me. Boobs! I was like, chest. It's like, oh my gosh, no. No. Um, once had a child go door to door, student to student, asking if they wanted their skin on or off. And I'm like... Am I Jodie Foster? What in... No. Um, had a kindergartner flip me off. I had one kick me, hit me, and call me stupid head. Because one of my motivational systems I use, I use just a canister of Skittles. And kids earn them. I don't just give them willy-nilly. They earn them at the end of class. So, got beat up for that, and I told teachers, I said, you may only address me as stupid head. <laughs> There's no Mrs. Wilbert, only stupid head. <sighs> what else? Oh, beginning of the year, I've got this kid at the second school I teach at. I teach at two elementary schools. <laughs> this kid, it was hard not to be like, I'm trying to get things done, and this kid's like, Yes, ma'am, Mrs. Wilbert, ma'am! <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, he's been a hoot. I've liked working with that one. And it's hard not to pick favorites. It's really not. It's human to see the ones who aren't being little turds and not thinking, Man, I love you. <laughs> And then you get the ones that are turds, like the ones that flip you off and while giving you a big grin while they do it. So it's not like, yeah, you can't tell me you don't know what you're doing. I know, I know you know what you're doing. And then screaming no at you because you need to get things done. And like with the really littles, it, it's hard because you've got this curriculum to cover. But you've got to get the behaviors nailed down, expectations nailed down or else there's no curriculum. And it's tough. Like, I've got a rant for days about what I think is going on. But I like to have my job. So, not going into it. Um. So, just seeing kids interact. It's like, man, I remember that. And I wouldn't want to teach middle school. Because oh, kids are mean. Like, they're mean in elementary school. They're even worse in middle school. Because when I was doing my student teaching in the spring, the spring semester, I did pre-K through 12. And oh my goodness, no middle school for me. I'd lose my job. <laughs> Be telling kids to shut up every day. Be bad. But um, also, I just got back from my second house. I live in two houses. This one here, this is my week house. And my other house was, which is a little over an hour away, that's my weekend house. I refer to myself as weekend wife because my husband lives in the other house. I live with his dad. Yeah, it's wonky. People, people always raise an eyebrow. And I'm like, rather not rent. And I'd really rather not drive that commute every day to and from pass. So, so I was driving along. Listening to Shakira for a bit. And I was like, man, I want some old reliable. So I turn on turn on Coldplay, Viva La Vida album. 
anyone who knows me knows that in high school I was obnoxious when it came to Coldplay. <laughs> like, I loved Coldplay. They were my main. <sighs> Just listening to it. And Viva La Vida is my first Coldplay album. I got it for my 14th birthday. And that party was a bust. Because I lived 15 miles out of town growing up. And I invited like five friends, I want to say. None of them showed up. I was just like, oh, darn. But I got my first Coldplay album, so I didn't care. Just like, oh, sweet. And, um, you know, I was thinking on the drive back here. I was like, man, this band got me through a lot. Because, <laughs> you know, they say be the person you needed when you were younger. Oh, yeah. I'm really trying because my, my younger self needed somebody. <sighs> Kids were mean. I was an easy target. I'm not going to go into it, but kids were mean to me, for sure. And yeah, I see kids being mean to other kids, and I try to shut that down quick. Because kids already go through enough, as it is. And when they don't have somebody to come help them, it's even worse. So I really try to be that person I needed in middle school. Because it felt like I had nobody. Not until my 8th grade year. Then I found my high school buddy, but we don't talk anymore, which is cool. It's cool. Nothing personal. Um. So, just jamming along. And I got to one of the songs. I was like, what's this called? What's this one called? And I thought, man, high school me would have me dead in a heartbeat. <laughs> and yeah, just thinking how that band got me through so much. You see those memes of that, that one girl holding the poster. It says, your music saved me. And you see some goofy picture under it. But legit, that, that band saved me. Like, middle school through high school, man, it was tough. And I tried to, I tried to play it off through humor, like, nothing's going on, it's cool. Tried to be class clown, class clown, a lot of my jokes did not land. <laughs> I was just weird and awkward. Not a ton has changed, quite a bit, but not a ton. I just got taller <laughs> and lost weight. <laughs> so... Yeah, I just, I feel for these kids. Because it's like, man, first of all, what's going on at home? And I see these kids struggling. And first thing I do when they come in, I have them show me how they're doing. Just show me on their chest. Like, five is a great day. One is, this is the worst day ever. I want to die. I don't say that all right. Just first, one is, this is a terrible day. Please leave me alone. So if kids show me lower than a three, if they give me zero and they mean it, I'm like, do you want to talk later? They're like, I'm like, okay, let's talk later. It's more often than not pet died, which that's tough. Been there. <laughs> and they can be really sweet. Some of them still ask me if I'm sad and I'm like, yeah, a little bit. Because my grandma just passed away a couple weeks ago. So... I learned this from my uh, PE buddy there at the main school I work at. <clears throat> and he told me, he said, if you're having a bad day, there's nothing wrong with telling those kids, like, straight up. Like, hey, just so you guys know, I'm having a bad day. I was like, all right, good to know. And so I said, hey, guys, just so you know, I'm struggling right now. My grandma's about to die. And they just got silent. And then the next week, I've got an Apple Watch because um, a lot of teachers have them. Get a text from my mom, a group text saying, Grandma died this morning. And I was in the middle of a circle with my third grade hour, <laughs> uh, second period. And I just stopped for a second. I was like, give me a sec. And here I am trying not to bawl. And one of the kids says, it's okay to cry, Mrs. Wilbur. I was like, that doesn't help, but thanks. 
And give me a sec. My allergies have been kicking in on high. Give me a sec. This is going to be real gross. Oh. I'm smelling colors when that's over with. Um. Anyway. So. It was tough with my grandma because she had Alzheimer's. And so did my paternal grandma. So, I mean, I'm getting shanked from both sides. Oh, well. They already took out 5% of me. It's whatever. So, yeah, our kids can be really sweet. And then they can just be merciless. Like, I'd say for the most part, my experience has been pretty good. The only thing that's really got me concerned is the kinder group. Kinder group. Kinder Boost is fine, but kindergarten, like, two out of my four groups is really problem are really problematic. Like, my last bunch, I have to have a pair with me. This is a recent arrangement, thank God, because they're crazy. It's a circus. And then the second school I go to, because my second school I teach, two first grade, one kindergarten... The kindergarten group I've got, again, a flipping circus, got one that snapped my phone off the uh, cart I was using, snatched my phone, and I was, like, really close to tackling her, and I told her, I said, did you buy that? And she just looked at me and was like, give it back. Thanks. Like, kids these days, just, authority is null, is what I've noticed. With a lot of kids, authority is just null. Because they don't get it at home. So, while I do not have kids, my husband and I, we've been setting goals for rearing our kids. One, read to them. Two, spend time with them. Three, don't let their dirty hands go anywhere near a tablet. Just spend time with them. Be there for them. Because what it is, kids are just deprived socially and emotionally. Social emotional. And we're left to pick up the slack. Us teachers. And people who say teachers are just glorified babysitters, I will pop you in the face myself. I will find you. Because no, we're not. Come observe what we do and we'll talk about who the babysitters are. Thanks. Anyway. Yeah, these groups are tough. For sure. Most of my other groups, like, sure, we have to sort some things out here and there. But it's not like... My last kinder group of the day for my Mondays and Wednesdays, my uh, PE buddy and I have joked about it. He said, that class is going to be the death of me. I said... Yeah, don't say that, please. This is my first year. You've been teaching for almost a decade. <laughs> but, yeah, it's true. Like, you, you just get those kids that just don't care. Who are you? Why do I have to listen to you? And it's really hard to keep that honey. Honey is, uh, what's, what's the word? What's the phrase? You can attract flies with honey better than with vinegar. And it's like, yeah, these buggers are flies, all right. Something like that. It's easier to attract with honey than it is with vinegar. I don't know. But it's, and it's really tough because we have a positive behavior intervention system, PBIS. And um, one of the things we all try to do is one, po one let's see, five positive remarks for every one corrective. I can sit there for 40 minutes and say, wow, Johnny, thank you for sitting crisscross applesauce. It looks so nice. And it would take 10 minutes before everybody picked up. Not to, I mean, you get like five of them that know that, hey, this is what we're doing right now. This is, no, this is not the time to mess around. You get those for sure. But if I were to say all throughout the 40 minutes I have each of these groups, you're doing so good, sitting down, listening, thank you, here's a Skittle. I could do it all, I could do it all day, and it wouldn't make a difference, because kids are not being taught ground rules.
else. I was telling my mom, I said, the day I told a teacher no or mouthed off to a teacher be the day you put me in the ground. She said, uh, yeah. Because my gosh, these kids just push boundaries and no one stops them. And like, I really try not to judge harshly on parents, again, because I'm not one, but it's really hard not to. And we just had parent-teacher conferences. I wasn't anticipating anything eventful. I had one parent, well, a couple of parents stop by because their kid brought them in. Just wanted to show them my room. I was like, all right, cool, I can dig it. I'm not in trouble. I dig it. So I told my cooperating teacher, and she said, that's a huge compliment. If a kid just wants to show their parents your room, that's a huge compliment. I was like, I guess you're right. Because I've been spending weeks trying to make it functional. My room is tiny. It's itty bitty. And the, oh gosh, I've been in other teachers' uh, classrooms, other teacher in the district classrooms. They've got walk-in closet. Meanwhile, I have just these cupboards, these shelving cupboards. And I'm like, excuse me, what'd you do to get that? Because I want that a lot. So I'm not having to constantly hide instruments. <sighs> yeah, teaching's an adventure for sure. I just have to tell myself, be the person you needed when you were younger. Because I needed somebody for sure. My somebody at the time, well, some buddies at the time were Coldplay and Jesus. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> got me this far, I guess. But there's my update on that one. Parents, please read to your kids, even if it's just a five-minute story. Facebook can wait. Rant over. All right, have a good one, nerds.